Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead, and today we're going to talk about some stuff that has really been dogging us last year. How the homestead changes Mm -hmm. during the winter. So last year was our huge learning curve for us, moving from Ohio to Wisconsin. Uh, The weather's a lot different here. Oh yeah. A lot. Oh yeah, oh Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we went through the school of hard knocks and we're going to share. That's an understatement. No, there's actually literally hard knocks. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, we want to share some of the stuff that we, uh, we had to go through that hopefully you will not because you will listen and learn from the voice of wisdom. Not that I'm very wise, right. and, but, oh. but we had to do stuff. So let's get to it. Now, probably the single biggest thing that we were really not prepared for uh, is water. Water freezing in the pipes, water being transported from point A to point B, Mm -hmm. there's snow in the way, your boots are constantly getting muddy, you've got, you've got to, you have to obviously feed your animals and make sure that they're getting hydrated properly or else that's bad juju. Right. You don't want to have, you don't want to lose an animal due to dehydration. So the problem that we had was the pipe in the barn froze. Yep. So um, the kids and us had to, we took turns hauling water from the basement out of the garage and into the barn, into the bucket, and that was... Probably about 100 yards, and that is no fun when you're... Yeah. I mean, we did have a little trailer, but we had these six-gallon water containers. Mm-hmm. You'd have to fill them up, mm-hmm. drag them through the snow, right. and dump them where they need to be. But that's not the only thing, is that the expense, because you've got to keep the, um, the, the water for your animals not frozen. So, number one, you've got to have heaters in there. Right. So we had these round stock tank heaters. They were approximately 250 watt heaters when they worked really well. Um, however, last Ooh. year with the amount of animals that we had, we had four of those running. That's a thousand watts running all day long. Our bill, f- now what's weird is this house has electric. Um, for the one home. The, one for the, one a meter for the house and a meter for the barn. Not quite sure why, but that's okay. But the electric bill for the barn doubled. Yep. So this year, thankfully, we have narrowed the, the animals down by giving the goats away. And we don't have pigs this year. Um, we have two stock tanks that we will have water for. One for the chickens and one for the cows and the donkeys. So that will be a huge cost reduction this year. Well, and we'll have two less heaters because we're going to put some heat tape on the mm-hmm. pipe that's going into the ground in the uh, barn. So that will hopefully eliminate that shuttling back and forth because holy smokes, that was a pain <laughs> in the rumpus room. It really was, especially when we'd have a snowstorm and the snow would be drifting in the whole way through across the driveway and it was just crazy. So water, water, water. Next up is food. Your animals have got to eat and you have, well, let's just say, it's better for you to prepare long in advance and have everything all sorted and stacked right. uh, before you need it and lots more than you think you're going to need. Oh my, yes. Uh, you know, waiting till the last second to get all of your feed and your hay prepared for the winter can be quite expensive and exhausting. You know, not having the right equipment to move the said hay, um, having to go and haul the feed from the feed store, it just, it's, it's, it's uh, extra work. It's extra work. So yeah. what we're, our plan is to have all of our grains, we have our hay, but have all of our grains for the animal f- for the whole winter. Yeah. And keep in mind that whatever you choose to do, like square bales, they're about 50 pounds a piece, you know, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. They're easy enough to manage. Even mm-hmm. the kids can schlep those things around if we need to. But the bigger square bales or round bales are 800 pounds. Mm-hmm. And so unless you plan on, you know, just tearing stuff off, a fleck here, a fleck there, uh, which would be really a pain because uh, you've got 
a ton of different, well, we have a ton of different animals to feed. And so where you keep the feed is very important. Mm -hmm. Has to be dry mm -hmm. and you have to have the equipment to move it around. Right. And that was unexpected for us. Yes, it was. Our, <laughs> our tractor, while it worked last year, um, it was um, not... Heavy enough. Heavy enough. Uh, the counterbalance on this tractor, you put an 800 pound bale on the back, the front end lifts up. Even with me on it. Right. It, well, and with you on the front. Yeah. Jonathan would be driving and you would be on the front and it would still not be on the ground. And then moving that through the snow really doesn't Oof. work. Can't steer it very well if it's not on the ground. That's right. Yeah. So feed management, where you're going to put it, how it's going to stay dry, how it's going to keep pests out too. It's yep. important because, um, you know, rats and stuff, they're not, they don't go away for the winter. They're going to be here. They're going to be here eating and they're going to eat your grain. Exactly. If you don't take care of it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Chores. Chores completely change during the winter. And my personal favorite, I think is, is the dookie, the pooperoni. The dookie sickles? The poop. It freezes up. It becomes harder than steel, titanium. It's, it's frozen poo, hon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And there are basically a few different schools of thought on how to deal with the poo. Um, last year, we were told, just leave it, man. Just leave it. Just leave it. Well, it got to be over a foot deep. That's a lot of poo. That's a lot of poo, which is great for the garden. However, uh, in the spring, it stinks. Muddy, and it's, poopy. It's not muddy. It's just poopy. It's sludgy. It's a sludge. It's a, sl it's a slushy. It's a poopy sludgy. It's a poo-sickle. Poo <laughs> so the thing about that is a lot of people said, well, what you can do is you can put down a bunch of like shavings, pine shavings or wood shavings or even hay, and it makes it easier to get underneath it, uh, which we did learn kind of doesn't work because they pee there too. And then it becomes an a icicle. Big, a big a frozen, sickle. you know, maybe we could we could do ice skating, like poo skating. I'll pass on poo that one. Poo changes everything. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> so the only thing that we can think to do differently is get to it before there's a layer. Right. Well, the problem is it, it, when the cow poos, if you're not standing right there, it's going to be frozen. It'll be frozen by the time you're out here in the evening. Because we come out here in the morning and the evening to do chores. And if it happens in the middle of the day, forget it's, about it's it. It's there. It's glued to the floor. It's stuck. Mm -hmm. Superman couldn't pry it up right. with his x-ray vision. Right. And the floor is concrete. If it was wood, if it was, um, not wood, if dirt. it was dirt, it might be a little easier. However, this is concrete. We're not able to put in... The, uh, the floor heaters, oh, you know, like you some fantastic expensive barns are. Well, so <laughs> management of chores, poo is one of those ones that you got to figure out for your own situation. Right. But I would recommend you be proactive, mm -hmm. unlike us who just went, oh, this stuff's all frozen here. We can't move it. I guess you let it build up. Other things. Let's figure out a new way this year. Other things, <laughs> the the clothing in mud and muck get crazy because you're out in the mud and the frozen poo and in the hay and all that stuff, and you've got your special boots on that are you know deep, deep cold boots, mm -hmm. and then that gets tracked through the to the garage or wherever you have. Maybe you got a mud room, but your mud room is going to be truly a mud room, but not just a mud room. A poopy room. A poo room. Well, the nice thing is when there's snow on the ground, the snow kind of wipes off the some poo. Of it. Yeah. off the boots you know but it's if it's on your on your coveralls it's it's just there another thing about chores is a lot for more time yes because it takes about 10 minutes to suit up and then come out here and thaw everything out and yeah, <sighs> yeah. pay attention to what you got to do chore wise because it right. will be different for sure well and this really only applies to those in the far north. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking north of Cincinnati and up. Yeah, because Texas doesn't have this problem. Not no. anywhere. No. no. Now, something else that changes in the winter is animal health and behavior. Oh yeah. Uh, animals are they're kind of crazy in the winter time. 
Well, things change for them too. <laughs> right. Yeah, things, I mean, the cows, obviously, they're not gonna be outside as much, although mm -hmm. they're the biggest, you know, here, okay, here, pause moment. Here's the thing. A lot of people don't understand that cows are cold hardy if they're brought up that way. And what do I mean by cold hardy? <laughs> they can be right out in the elements and it doesn't bother them. They, they have big feedlots. The biggest feedlots uh, are in Montana, you know, and people raise cows in Alaska. So when, when you see cows outside, don't freak out if they're in the snow because that's actually not a bad thing. They get used to it and they're built to do that. Right. The the pro where where problems happen is if you have a cow that has stayed inside most of the winter and then you stick it outside in January, that's when you're gonna have a problem. You could kill that cow. Abrupt changes right. are not good. Abrupt changes are bad. Um, they have been outside all summer and as winter hits, their their coat starts to thicken up. Mm -hmm and they have built the right coat. But if they're inside, they're not gonna build up that nice uh, winter coat um, and they it could kill them. Yeah, and so, well, going back, sorry, that was my little rabbit trail. Yeah. Uh, but the behavior of the animals changes and you gotta pay attention to what you have and, and how it's gonna go down. Right. For example, uh, the cows don't drink as much water. Nope. Most of the animals don't drink as much water. Not in the winter time. It, I'm not exactly sure why they don't drink a lot of water, but uh, they just don't need to. I mean, they do drink water, but not as much as they do in the summertime. Yeah, and uh, you know, animals like goats. We've had goats for many years, and uh, one thing you gotta keep your eye on are parasites, mm -hmm. you know, um, because they're gonna be inside laying on their poo more than they would be outside laying on grass. Right. And so you gotta keep checking them to make sure that they're not getting any kind of weaselly nasty worms or whatever. <laughs> and uh, if they do, take care of it right away. Right, don't put that one off. That one's gotta get taken care of right away. Uh, something that we had an issue with on our barn, within, within the barn last year was ringworm. Yep. Our cows had ringworm. Mm -hmm. Now it wasn't, um, it's not an illness that is transferable to humans. I mean, humans can get it, but it's, um, we never had an issue with it. Not common. No, it's not common. However, our cows got it and they're going to probably get it again this winter, but there's, there's a few treatments that you can do. They're chemical based, but honestly, it will resolve itself in a few months when, they when get the some sunlight. summer comes out. Sunlight. The sun comes out. Right. So when summer hits, the ringworm goes away. And honestly, I've been told it never leaves your barn. It's always here. That's weird. It is really weird, but yeah. the reason they get it is because they're not getting enough sunlight because yeah. it's winter. Well, and we we allow the, the uh, animals to... to to come into the barn whenever they want to. The door's always open, right. but then they still have an outside paddock. Right. Uh, and we just do that because when it's nice out, why would you keep them penned up? Right, exactly. The only time we'll close the door is at night, um, and if there's a bad storm coming, yeah, we'll close up the storm. door and we'll yeah. keep them inside. So. so just be aware that your animal's behavior will change just like human's mm -hmm. behavior changes. Yep. Now, another way that life changes on the homestead uh, has nothing to do with outside. Well, it could. It could. Yeah, it, it does have a lot to do with outside because there's lots of snow and cold weather and... Stuff to do. Nobody wants to be out in it. No, that's not true. There's fun things. But what I was going to get at actually is... Wait, wait. What's <sighs> fun things about outside in the snow? When we were dragging the kids around oh, on the yeah, ATVs. That's fun. that's fun. Okay. Snow, Snowman, snowmobiling. Yeah, okay. Ice fishing. Yeah. The point is, your your behavior is going to change. Yes. And so, yes, there are outdoor things, and there's a lot of that stuff that's really cool that you can get involved in, but you're inside a lot more than you would be. Yes. So, hobbies. Hobbies, yes. Um, are you going to show? show and tell I me? I am. Okay, so I started this blanket last year. And I'm I'm gonna do I'm I'm gonna finish it this year. I'm gonna finish it. So my hobby is crocheting. Yeah. So and um, I I think okay. I, I started to get into like model building, like model building, just models, you know? But I think I really wanna get into um, um, model trains. This is the first time that we've had a basement 
that I could actually have some room to put out a uh, an actual big like train set. Better clean the garage or the basement. Oh, I got that done. Anyway, the point is this, guys, that you are going to be inside a lot more, obviously, and um, if you're not if you're not proactive, like we were not proactive last year, uh, you get cabin fever. Mm -hmm. Well, I was I was out pretty much out for the count for what two months oh easy my back was out i couldn't i couldn't do anything so she actually got hurt yeah and then that's and then so she she was out and yeah. and you get buggy if you're in here all the time and yeah. since you know this house is not a small house but it's not also a massive house no. uh, but the main living area for us is all right here in one vicinity so unless you're in your bedroom you're right here so everybody's kind of on top of each other all the time pretty much so hobbies can be your best friend mm -hmm. and you don't have to pick things that are expensive but you know pick something that's interesting to you like um for me the train set thing i think would be super cool and to make it like themed i was thinking it would be really neat to make a historically accurate World War Two kind of thing. That'd be cool. That you would know, be really cool. Yeah. Have like, you know, some town like Bastogne or something like mm -hmm. that and, and do it up correctly to scale. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Grace really likes to do the hook rug projects. So we'll get one of those for her every month. And um, she really likes those. So. Just be aware. It's going to change. Your animals change. You change. Mm -hmm. Everything changes and it's good. It, it brings variety. Yeah. Um, and also... You're going to need these things because you'll get buggy otherwise. Yeah. We should have a Lego train set. Yeah. Do tell. Well, the kids... Because I like Legos. Yeah, I know. The kids love to build Lego houses and Lego towns. They'll take over the dining room table, which is not a small table. It's pretty... It's an eight foot long table. Yeah. And they will set up this little town on here, which really stinks because they can't keep it up for very long. Because it's dinner time usually, or they're having to do schoolwork and well, time to a lot. <coughs> time to a lot. Some of the basement. Exactly. Yeah. Time to make some of the basement a Lego land. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hope that some of these things that we've gone through will benefit you, so that you don't have to go through as many things right. as we did. Well, and if you have any ideas, please put them in the comments below. Give us some more hobby ideas, because you know. You can only crochet so many koozies. Well, and if and let's just say that some viewer out there is going, you know what? I have a train set that I have not used in years. I can tell you there's one very, very grateful possible recipient. The little just, boy here, just, he would love that. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. But anyway, um, also, don't forget, guys, that um, all our social media links are down below. We're on all this stuff and, you know. Instagram and Twitter Claire, and Facebook and. Claire does that for us because she's all techie. She's, yeah, she's, the kids are better at the social medias than we are. Yeah, I mean, I can still record music and video production with computers, but I don't like social media too much. No, not so, a fan. Anyway, it's down there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it for the day. I'm okay. Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing and blessed day. We know your love of the winter is legendary, Claire. Yeah. So how would you say the winter affects you on the homestead? I'm so depressed. <laughs> don't like it? I like the snow, but the cold gets to me. It, like penetrates my core. Your core. My core. Marine core. Hold on, just go on. Woman, we're trying to make a video here. I don't care, I don't like the flies. She's killing the flies. I am. And the flies are killing me. I, I am, I am. So, how, no. do you, how do you want to start the video? I think we just did. We already did the intro outside. Yeah, you're right. There's a fly. <laughs>